So what are the problems that exist in the travel space today? Why do we need Web3 and how will Web3 solve some of these problems? So one of the biggest ones are costs. So anyone who has traveled before, I'm sure that you've seen that there's a lot of costs that goes into travel because now we have platforms that help with the discovery piece and the booking piece. But then what ends up happening is that both um, from the initial provider of the hospitality service and then the end user it ends up costing both sides more because then the middleman is the one who actually takes um, a bigger cut of that and so cost is a big problem that exists in web 2 where we're seeing inflating costs and a lot of companies who initially came out because they're supposed to be a cheaper solution to say hotels because of all the fees they've actually now probably ended up at the same place in terms of the cost another really interesting uh, problem that exists in Web2 is about a um, secondary marketplace. So travel is actually one of the largest industries that doesn't have a secondary market. And what that means is that basically the providers of travel, so airlines, hotels, etc., they're the only ones who can really sell it other than OTAs. And if you and I as a consumer, let's say we can't travel because of whatever reason, there's no way for us to actually resell a flight or a hotel room. We either have to get a cancellation or forfeit that. And so that's a really big problem because there's a lot of value loss and it's not an ideal experience for anybody because the traveler is unhappy and so they blame the, the uh, hospital, hospitality provider and then they probably don't wanna rebook with them. So it's just a really bad experience all around. The third piece, uh, loyalty. So this is something that I care a lot about. Obviously, as a nomad, I travel a lot and loyalty is super important to me. I think as anyone who has booked either a flight or even a hotel room somewhere else, loyalty is a really broken system. Not only is it outdated and really inefficient, but I think a lot of the infrastructure doesn't allow for better loyalty programs to be built. What happens will what happens often is if let's say for example you're flying on on an airline and that's the only time you ever fly on that airline then all of the loyalty points you accrue for that one flight gets lost because it's not transferable and portable to another loyalty and so this becomes a really big problem because then um, it's really clunky for people to use and then people don't actually see the value of a loyalty program which is the whole point of this and the second problem with loyalty is that if anyone has ever tried to redeem it's like they optimize for the worst experience to make it really, really difficult so that you almost can't redeem or uh, they make it so hard and so um, opaque that you don't even know how to do that. And so I think that um, one of the problems here is that if you have in uh, loyalty programs that are not transparent, then people don't want to use it. And again, it doesn't build loyalty because people never realize the benefits of that. And then finally, ownership. So this is really, really key, obviously, to Web3 as a whole in terms of the value and ethos behind it. So as we saw with the platform economy, all of the value um, that gets created oftentimes is kept with the middleman. And so ownership uh, in Web3 is really about distributing that value. And so we actually see this problem a lot in developing countries or nations where you have a lot of local tour operators that are incredible. They have really, really great tours, but then they rely on some e intermediary, either an OTA or say something like a cruise ship that goes to a port. And the people who really provide that value, the local economies, they're the ones who should get most of the value, but actually the middle person is the one who takes most of it. And so as the person on the other side, as a consumer, you think that you're probably supporting local economy, economy, but in reality, it's the intermediary, the middle person who's getting most of that value. And so if you could actually create a peer-to-peer -peer relationship between the two, then that really transforms not only the relationship, but that value accrual as well. So how can Web3 and blockchain solve this? In terms of the cost, what blockchain does is that because it's an open source ledger that anybody can build on, it makes it accessible so that people can use that data and build different apps and services and programs on it. Versus what happens right now is that you have all of these companies which are siloed, they have this data. And so it becomes really expensive to either build with them or they have such a massive stronghold on the services that they provide that nobody else can build on top. And so that ends up leading to experience, expensive experiences for everybody. 
The second part of Web3 technology that really helps with solving some of the cost issues is using smart contracts. So smart contracts are basically just code that automate specific actions based on inputs and then um, leads to some kind of output. So as an example of this, uh, with D-Travel, what we're doing is that we have booking contracts that use smart contracts. And when somebody like a guest books um, a trip, that go that fund goes into a smart contract and then is automatically sent to the host after the cancellation period is over. So as you can see, when you remove anybody in the middle from having to do manual work, now that becomes really, really efficient and super automated so that you remove a lot of costs. And then that cost savings gets passed down to the consumer. So that's really powerful and one of the really big benefits on how we can solve the cost issue in Web2 today, not just in travel, but across all industries. Second piece is NFT. So <clears throat> I'm sure this is something that you guys have been hearing a lot about. It feels like everybody and their dog has an NFT, uh, which is awesome because I think it's really led to a lot of mainstream awareness and adoption. But what NFTs enable is they're a type of token and basically allows companies and services to tokenize a specific asset like an airline ticket or a hotel room and then use that to be able to sell on a secondary market because what it does is it equalizes the value so that it's a one-to-one -one comparison because what what happens right now is if you have one hotel room for example how do you translate the value of that into another hotel room that becomes very difficult but when you have an nft or a token that actually represents like one um one store of value that is translatable to an, to the next, then you can actually be able to start to resell some of that because now it's a transferable value. And so with the NFT market, that's what we're starting to see with hotels and airlines is a secondary market so that if you need to sell your, your flight or your hotel room for whatever reason, or even your experience, you can actually do that via NFTs. Um, and then I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next few slides. Rewards are something that we're seeing a lot in the Web3 space. So this, I, I saw a comment earlier, tokenizing of rewards is definitely such a great use case for rewards and loyalty programs because the biggest benefit is that you can actually take that and port it to a different um different app. And so imagine if all airlines had the same kind of reward system, so that it almost didn't matter where you flew or who you flew with, but you would have one loyalty system that followed you from place to place. And I think that's just really, really powerful. And we're actually starting to see that some of the airlines are picking up on this, which I'll talk about um, next. But it's, it's really incredible because, uh, you know, now as a traveler, you can actually have a loyalty program that works for you instead of against you. And then finally, tokens. So the idea behind tokens and the power behind tokens is really about distributing that value and that ownership to everybody. And so a lot of these um, companies that start, they actually want to reward community members for contributing value and also for using. So imagine if uh, Uber gave out tokens to all of the people both their drivers and rider for contributing value to that ecosystem, then everybody would benefit more. And that's really the promise of Web3 and using tokens, because as the network grows, as everybody who contributes to that network gets the tokens, then everybody wins. And so it's this really more fair and equitable way uh, rather than Web2, where everybody is getting a piece of that pie and they're helping to grow that pie versus just a few people um, being able to benefit from that.